upset on the internet. Hi everybody, welcome to Retro Station 1989. I'm Commander Dan, the commander and lone inhabitant of the Retro Station, and this is License to Play, a show where we review old retro games based on licensed materials. Things like comic books or movies, uh, sometimes fast food mascots or even a breakfast cereal mascot here and there. Basically, if it was licensed and it's a retro game, we'll review it. And right now, we're going to be setting up a pretty great review today. Uh, well, that is if I can get myself fed. You know, I was sent up here by my alien overlords to test games to see if they were dangerous for the rest of the universe. They believed that we were sending out messages of war from Earth. Uh, things like Defender and Gorf and Space Invaders didn't go over so well with folks we had painted to be the invaders. So, uh, well, we cleared up that misunderstanding, but they like watching me, so I volunteered to be here aboard this space station above the Earth with nothing to eat but turnips and astronaut ice cream. But that changes today. <laughs> today, I get my meal on. <laughs> oh, there we go. Commander, I've opened communications with the fast food restaurant in the Cassiopeia Quadrant. What kind of place is it again? It is a fast food establishment, five guys, an alien, and two androids. It is the most popular restaurant of its kind in that sector of space. Sounds decent. Let's do it. We're connected, Commander. On screen. Welcome to Five Guys, an Alien, and Two Androids. My name is Bloth. How can I meet your needs today? Hey, uh, I'm Commander Dan, aboard the Retro Station. I'm a, I'm a dude from uh, Earth, and I... Huh. Yes, you're a dude from Planet Dude, whatever. What kind of a food do you want? What's the best thing on the menu, in your opinion? Oh, uh, really? You're gonna be that guy? Okay, fine. I like the number eight. It tastes like my favorite thing. What's that? Well, Commander Dude from Planet Dude, I'm a dog man. What do you imagine my favorite thing to taste is? I don't think I want to. Ah, but I bet you can guess. Anyways, Earth Dude from Planet Dude, how about the thing I see most of the simian life forms who come through here order? What's that? Well, that's burnt hominid flesh ground up and slapped on a grain-based breading and sprayed with a plant-based material that has been fermented. And fermented vine fruit sliced and pickled in brine and some of the fluid. Oh, and fried tubers. Simian flesh? You, you mean like... monkey meat? Earth dude, there are like a billion carnivores out there, and most of them cannibalize each other. What are you, a vegan? Like a vegetarian? No, from the vegan constellation. They're all ass white carnivores like you. Hey! Hey, pal, I'm the customer, and the customer's always right. You, I want you to get me your manager right now! No. Whoa! <laughs> what an a-hole! Get, get them back on the line, Margo. Affirmative, Commander. Folks, we got a classic game on deck today. I thought it was going to be a celebration today. We were just going to have an easy, breezy time of it. But this a-hole out there is cutting me off and not giving me what I want, which is my non-turnip, non-astronaut ice cream food. Oh, and it's got a hell of a story, this game. Look, you watch this while Margo and I reestablish communication with that jerk from the fast food place. Our story begins in 1947, in December. Carl Barks creates Scrooge McDuck as a side character in the Donald Duck comic story, Christmas on Bear Mountain. The character struck a chord with the fans of Donald Duck, and a legend was born. The comics were some of the most popular non-superhero comics in the 50s and 60s, especially in the days of the McCarthy hearings against un-American activity and the creation of the Comics Code Authority. Now this was after Frederick Wortham's book Seduction of the Innocent blamed comics for everything, from juvenile delinquency and homosexuality to outright murder. Funny books made money, because everything cool was being censored. You know, the Comics Code Authority had their hands around the throat of things like Mad Magazine, Eerie, uh, Tales from the Crypt, and even Batman. So think the ESRB, but for comic books instead of video games. Scrooge's story is, he's the richest duck in the world. 
Uncle Scrooge is the uncle of Donald Duck and great uncle to Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and is wealthy in the extreme. He calls himself an adventure capitalist, gaining wealth by adventure. So think of Indiana Jones, but instead of handing everything over to top men, he just puts it in a vault and swims around in the change. In the comics, Uncle Scrooge was just one of those background characters in the world of Disney. One of those things you might see at a theme park and wonder, what the heck is that? Where's that from? Like the Disney Orange Bird, a mascot created for the Florida Parks uh, to be a mascot for the Florida Citrus Commission. So, not obscure, just not widely known outside the comics. That is, until Mickey's Christmas Carol, which featured Uncle Scrooge in the Scrooge role in 1984 as a television featurette. Then, it became a yearly tradition for families in the United States. Our family received it on a VHS tape from the States when we lived on a military base in Germany. And we didn't get a lot of American television over there. It was just uh, AFN, which, ugh, if anyone is an army brat out there can tell you AFN wasn't the greatest thing ever, especially for kids. I mean, cartoons were rare, and commercials were non-existent. So the tape gave us both. I mean, you got to see breakfast cereal commercials and just commercials for toys. Commercials even for shampoo or toilet paper were interesting because over in Germany, we didn't have that. The tape was a real godsend, I have to say. From there, it was clear Uncle Scrooge was a Disney staple. Every year, we'd see the Disney version of The Christmas Carol with Uncle Scrooge. But in 1987, Disney Animation on Television decided to capitalize on the popularity of Uncle Scrooge in a new cartoon called DuckTales. It aired as a miniseries created from a made-for-television movie called The Treasure of the Golden Suns. It was a smash hit, and kids loved it. Over time, we were introduced to Uncle Scrooge, Magicka Dispel, Flintheart Glumgold, Launchpad McQuack and Mrs. Beakley and her niece Webigail, not to mention Gyro Gearloose, the absent-minded inventor, Gizmo Duck, based on uh, basically RoboCop um, <laughs> and a unicycle, I guess, and Bubba, a caveman duck kid. Now, DuckTales became a featured portion of the Disney Afternoon which began with the Wuzzles, DuckTales, and Gummy Bears, and began a legacy that included Rescue Rangers, Darkwing Duck, and Tailspin. DuckTales ran for four seasons, and recently was rebooted for Disney Channel and Disney+. Plus. And there have been a ton of licensed products for this brand, including video games. Try to be rude to me, will you? Man, I will just slap the doggy-flavored taste out of the hell on his... Margo! Have we got that son of a bitch... He's a dog. Easy, folks. It's all, it's all right to say that. Calm down, everybody. Do we have that son of a bitch back on the comms? One moment, Commander. Contact established. Thank you for contacting five guys, two aliens and an android. How can we make your day? Ugh, foodtastic. Hey, hey, dipshit. Remember me? I'm going to talk to your man. No. <laughs> Unfreaking believable! Margo? Yes, Commander. I'll reestablish contact. But may I suggest a kinder method of speaking to the clerk? You attract more flies with honey than vinegar, as the earth saying goes. That's corpses, Margo. You attract more flies with corpses. And believe me, sister, I'm in a fly-attracting mood right now. Perhaps allow me to talk to him. Fine. Take it away. Thank you for contacting five guys, two aliens, and an android. How can we make your day fantastic? Uh. Yes, I am the station AI, designate Margo, from Retro Station 1989. I would like to order some food for... No. Oh, hell no. See? Dude's a dick! Let's get him back on the line. I'm not taking no for an answer. And when his manager gets on the phone, I'll tell him he's been a very, very bad whatever the hell he is. Meanwhile, today we're talking about DuckTales for the NES. Here we are, the summer of 1989. That's what I named the retro station after. I'm 14 years old at my cousin Eric's house, and we're both into three things. Comic books, computers, and video games. We spent the better part of that summer playing through King's Quest III, Ultima 4, and on the NES, DuckTales. Now, we beat King's Quest 3. Uh, we got stuck on Ultima 4 since it doesn't really have a plot much. It's more of a existential kind of a game, and played DuckTales to a reasonable degree, but never beat it. DuckTales was created by Capcom as a part of a series of Disney-related titles for Nintendo. 
Their Disney library started with a reviled game called Mickey Mouse Capade, which I happen to like a lot, to be honest with you. They had a DuckTales game and went on to cover the entire Disney afternoon from the late 80s. Rescue Rangers, Tailspin, and Darkwing Duck. DuckTales is arguably the greatest title Capcom ever released under the Disney license. They had a Gummy Bears game on the Sega Genesis as well, which was like the exact opposite of that. Mike Matei did a Let's Play of that and should have done a I'd rather not ever play that piece of garbage instead. I'm very forgiving when it comes to licenses I love. And by the way, I love The Gummy Bears, The Adventures of the Gummy Bears. I love that cartoon, but... Dude, that game is sad. It's a sad piece of garbage. <laughs> In the summer of 89, we explored all through DuckTales as much as we could, but we never got to the end. But in 89, my brother and sister and I finally got our own copy of DuckTales for ourselves. And with our powers combined? No, we didn't form Captain Planet. We finally got through the multiple levels of DuckTales. And in such a short time, by the way, my dad was sure we were cheating somehow. But we weren't cheating. What we had was this bad boy. We had the power. Nintendo Power. Now, this is a scan, unfortunately. My collection of Nintendo Powers is pretty big, uh, but for some reason, a magazine that had a readership of like a half a million people, meaning there are at least as many issues or a little less extant out there, are now as precious as rare wall comics in some cases. With such high prices, artificial demand is, well, let's just say I call she and he nanigans on it. She and he, all right? And non-binary shenanigans as well. Non-binary nanigans. NB nanigans, that's what it is. He and she and NB nanigans on all of it. Stupid eBay. Eh, world one one problems, I guess. In our combined victory, my siblings let me choose the next game we got, and I will definitely review that one in the future. It's a strange one, and has a heartwarming story to go along with it, but today... We're talking about DuckTales. If I can get that burger and fries, that is. Thank you for holding. Your call is very important to us. Please hold. You can't One do of this our to cuisine me. experts I'm a commander. will be with you momentarily. Of a s- well, Message repeats in space station. Block language. I'm by myself. I don't really they command anything. Freaking hold music. I command them to. Thank you for holding. Answer their phone. The call is very important Freaking to us. Stupid. Please hold. One of your cuisine experts will be with you momentarily. Oh, when I get them on the this phone. Message I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Also, <laughs> you can't put me on hold uh, uh, for uh, very uh, much uh, longer, uh, uh, or I will uh, finally. Welcome to Five Guys, an Alien, and Two Androids. My name is Bloth. How can I meet your Killian? Oh, you again? Yeah, that's right. I want your manager, pal. Yeah. Seriously? Ugh. Fine. Hold. Thank you for holding. Your call is very important to us. Please hold. One of our cuisine experts will be with you momentarily. Message repeats in Clablock language. Bleep, blop, bleep. Welcome to Five Guys and Alien and Two Androids. I'm Allium Wadhams, the manager. You wanted to speak with me? Yeah, buddy. Your little counter jockey there wasn't, you know, willing to suit me with my culinary needs. He said he would, but he didn't. And I'm a hungry man here in space. I'm tired of turnips. So, I want him reprimanded and neutered. Sir, please, calm down. We'll get you fed. You wanted to eat a human or something, right? No! God, no! Oh, uh, no. He's an Earth dude from whatever planet. Earth, I think, boss. I see. So, that's an ixnay on the Death Burger with sadness juice. Odd, we thought humans like that sort of thing. Um, can I interest you in a Starlux salad instead? What is that? It's made of delicate roots from leafy greens, tubers, sliced fruit, and a vinaigrette made from the morning dew on Hackleon 9. No dead animals whatsoever. No, 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 no. See, I want, I just want a hamburger and a shake, chocolate, hamburger, you know, chopped cow meat and a bun, pickle, some ketchup. It's the easiest thing in the universe, chocolate shake. And fried potatoes, French fries. Well, you don't have a France. Uh, just fried potatoes, fries, you know, fries. You mean cow meat? Like from a bovine? And milk also from a cow? Look, buddy, this is a family establishment, and we bovinids do not take kindly to you meatloafs suggesting feeding on our flesh. Moo, sir. Moo. Oh. Oh, oh, crap, 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 crap. Uh, uh, sir, I, I'm very sorry. I, I, 
Oh man, I'll uh, I, 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 no, you know, I'll have the star, the Starlock salad instead. I, I guess I'm. Oh man, vegetables are fine. Oh, please, please forgive me. I had no idea. Right. Now you'd like a chocolate shake? We can make you one. No, no, I, I don't want you to any trouble. And besides, you know, it's kind of. No, no, we can make you one. It's our pleasure to meet your culinary needs. The shake will use seed and nut oils to approximate animal fluids, and we can make you fries too. Anything else? No. That'll be it. And. I'm sorry about the burger and the milk thing. I just... I I, I didn't think. <laughs> Most predatory carnivores don't. Give me one Starlux special with fries. I'm glad we could clear this up. Vegetables are better for you. And the rest of the animals on your planet. Well, that could have gone better. Yes, Commander. Next time we'll try a vegan place. No way. They sound like ass wipes. Indeed. Well, folks, looks like I got some food coming. And at least for once, it won't be turnips, which is great. And while I didn't get a burger, I'm definitely getting fries. So very happy about that. Oh, man. Well, let's break down the game for you while we wait. DuckTales, created by Capcom for the NES, was released in 1989 with a Game Boy port of the same game in 1990. It was designed by Keiji Inafune. He worked on great titles like Mega Man and Street Fighter, and later on, Onimusha, a fantastic game. And he also, oh, he also worked on Mighty Number no. 9, which is, you know, well, let's just talk about DuckTales. Around the same time that DuckTales for the NES came out, there was a platformer released for PC, Amiga, and Commodore 64 called DuckTales The Quest for the Gold. Or Quest for Gold. Well, not many... People talk about that one. Uh, it's by Sierra Online. They made King's Quest series and Space Quest, and they also made Black Cauldron, which is a great game. In fact, I might even do a license to play on that one. DuckTales Quest for the Gold has most of the fun stuff from the show and includes levels featuring Webby, Launchpad, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and Uncle Scrooge, and the epic fun of buying stocks and bonds taking pictures of pink elephants, and walking in a straight line for a little bit without falling over. Okay, Sierra Online, it's a rare miss. <laughs> but Capcom knocked it out of the park. DuckTales for NES features the characters from the cartoon in a world-spanning trip to, well, to get Uncle Scrooge that cheddar, the loot. The Scratch, the Simoleons, that money, baby. We're talking filthy lucre, stacks of cash in the bazillions. Money, 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 money. Money, money, money by the pound. Just like the comics and the TV show, Uncle Scrooge is a known adventure capitalist, and this game nails that theme perfectly. Both in its easy-to-pick-up, hard-to-master gameplay, with your cane and pogo bouncing and using it uh, as a golf club, and the five levels within, the Amazon, Himalayas, Transylvania, African Mines, and Moon, are that pulpy kind of adventure locales that you'd expect for a guy who's an adventure capitalist. The levels consist of vertical and horizontal exploration, though it's not strictly necessary to finish the level to go everywhere in the game. You won't find the hidden treasures and key items to make the game a little easier if you don't. But, oh, and don't forget the sweet, sweet cash money loot, baby. You're talking the bling, son. You can't get all that if you don't explore everywhere. Now, if you've never played this game or never heard of it or haven't been on the internet ever or visited YouTube ever, I mean, even now I'm wondering why I chose to review this game today. But you know what? You probably already know everything there is to know about the game. But if you've never played this game or never heard of it, I'm here to tell you it's one of the very bright spots on the NES, probably in the overall top three games that ever came out for the system. And it's in my personal top five games on the NES. But I already told you, my favorite game is Tide, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and Friday the 13th. And Super Mario Bros. 3, truth be told. But licensed games always beat out other games for me. But in second place, at a solid two, is DuckTales. I'll go over the levels quickly, but folks, this game has been reviewed to death. So don't expect me to throw a spanner into the works vis-a-vis -vis your understanding of this game but I hope to give you some interesting tidbits. Let's start with the treasures Uncle Scrooge is looking for. Now, you don't have to do the levels in order, 
You can do them in any order you want, but I'll read them off in alphabetical order, basically. Uh, in the African mines, you're looking for the giant diamond of inner earth. The Amazon, the scepter of the Incan king. In the Himalayas, the lost crown of Genghis Khan, or Genghis Khan. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. On the moon, however, you get the green cheese of longevity. In Transylvania, you get the coin of the lost realm. And those are the treasures. Once you've found them, the game's over. Each level, though, has extra elements. In Transylvania, you can find an HP boost, for example. In the African mines, Mrs. Beakley showers you with food gifts to replenish your health. And right after, you get a snazzy ruby ring. In the Himalayas, after freeing Bubba, you get another health expansion. And on the moon, you find a space coin. And that's not the only set of secret things in the game. Did you know that there are two endings to the game? That's right, there's a good ending and a bad ending. Check it out. But did you know there's a hidden third ending? <laughs> right. If you end the game with zero money, you get a newspaper headline talking about it and a picture of a very sad, poor Uncle Scrooge. But I hear you asking, how in the name of Blabber and Blatherskythe can I end up the game with no money when diamonds literally fall into the lap of Uncle Scrooge at every turn? Is this feat impossible? No, because there's a hidden move in the game that's pretty great, and you may not know it at all since it's not talked about much. When you get to $3 million, press select. You get all of your health back. Get to $6 million exactly, and you're at the end of the game. Take a hit, hit select, replenish your life, get another hit, hit select, and you're at zero. Then go on to finish the game without collecting any more diamonds or money, and boom, ultimate bad ending. Except not really. It's a Disney game, because Scrooge has all of those treasures, and he can build his wealth back. But the screen is different. It shows him, like, completely destitute. With all this juicy treasure and bonus stuff everywhere to find and hidden bonuses and the gameplay being so tight, this game is a treat to play. Commander Dan, delivery pod approaching. Excellent! Scan it and set it right up. All right, no more turnips for me. I'm going to eat some food. It's going to be wonderful. Scan complete. Pod is clear of xeno disease or other contaminants. Enjoy your meal. Oh, yes. Oh, here we go, buddy. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I'm going to get my grub on. You folks watch this. Here's a little bonus. The NES game is pretty great, but there's more. In 2013, fans of the show were blown away by the Cell animated and fantastic DuckTales Remastered. It's got more levels, more added content, and folks, it has this. The Money Vault. Ah, it's the little things, everyone. I mean, just as a kid, just seeing that would have made me thrilled beyond my wildest dreams. And it's fun just to dive in and swim around in all the, all the money that you get. Um, but the characters in, in the game are voiced by the surviving cast, including Alan Young as Uncle Scrooge. Alan Young was an actor from the 50s and 60s uh, who was on Mr. Ed, and it was a big show with a talking horse. Um, it expands the lore, and you know I love lore, of the DuckTales game from the 80s. So instead of just the scepter of the Incan king, it's also the lost treasure of Manco Capquack. This is a great update to the game. But if you're still hungry for more, there's a sequel to the game as well. And I'm going to go over that one in another episode, featuring rare games with a Disney license and the rest of the Disney Afternoon games, which were released as a collection by Retroware. And uh, it came with like an art book style digital museum. But for now, let's just ask that oh so important question. So, does DuckTales for the NES by Capcom have a license to play? Of course it does. This game's a classic, everybody. Man, everything comes together with this thing like you wouldn't believe. Characters, music, video, gameplay, everything. License to play guaranteed, folks. You get this one, you won't be sorry. Man, it comes together like, well, like my meal. That shake was delicious, and I gotta tell you, I'm I'm saying that, that Starluck salad was pretty damn good. That manager made it sound really, really great. And I saved the best for last, my fries. Hey, listen. 
I uh, ate your fries, Commander Dan. I'm sorry. I was in that jar for a week. I thought I was going to starve to death. Son of a... Anyway, folks. It's turnips tonight. Retro forever. And don't forget to stay retro. Peace. Hey, everybody. Thanks for uh, tuning in to the show today. Uh, I say tuning in. That's such an anachronistic phrase. Thanks for choosing to watch my episode of License to Play. And uh, thanks again to my uh, buddy Nathan Barnett um, for uh, guest starring on my show. You might know him better as Keith Epicary. Please visit his YouTube channel. Please subscribe to him also on uh, Twitch. He is over there as the Nathan Staten. Um, actually, I think he is just... Oh, no, he is the Nathan, Nathan Station over there. But more importantly than that, when uh, Keith is going to be on America's Got Talent on August 24th, I want you to watch it. I want you to vote for him, and let's get him into the uh, finals. Please, everyone. It, it's America's Got Talent, and he's got so much talent. I mean, he nailed my stupid dialogue, and my dialogue is written by a four-year-old brain. That's my brain. But anyway, if you like what you saw today, please give me a thumbs up. Um, please subscribe if you want to know when I'm going to have more episodes coming out. Uh, we've got staff picks coming out on Tuesday. Um, and I stream throughout the week on Twitch.tv over at Retro Station 1989 So again, please, thumbs up, like, subscribe if you would, uh, share, and follow me over on Twitch. If you do all those things, I'll become an old man with happy dreams instead of living a life of utter torment. Probably not true, but hey, you don't know. It could be torment. But more importantly than all of that, anything I've said or done on these videos, always remember to stay retro. Peace!